Hello and welcome to my second GNSS monitoring video. In this video, I want to talk about real-time monitoring with the RTK engine. There's also a video available, GNSS monitoring one, connection to a GNSS receiver and data storage, where I explain this part of setting up a GNSS system. In this video, I want to show you the real-time monitoring with T4D server and the module synchronizer, RTK engine and integrity monitor. Later, I also want to show you the data analyze in T4D web. If you're interested in post-processing monitoring, there's also a separate video available for this. To show you the real-time monitoring with T4D, I'm connected to one of our demo systems. In this demo system, I have three receivers configured. One receiver is based on the Terrasat office close to Munich in Germany. One, the station Hohenbrunn, is around three kilometers away in the next little town. And the receiver Saglerstraße is uh, only around 300 meters away. For real-time monitoring, we basically need three modules, the synchronizer, the RTK engine, and the integrity monitor. The synchronizer collects the data from the GNSS receivers and sends them as one epoch to the processing engines. The RTK engine is the main processing engine in T4D server. It processes uh, the baselines between the stations, shows here the length for the stations, uh, the status of the processing results, the solution, and the used orbit. The orbits are provided by the ephemeris manager module loaded with the first receiver in T4D. The ephemeris manager is the own module in T4D server and it's added automatically with the first GNSS receiver. The ephemeris manager collects all kinds of ephemeris, the broadcast ephemeris from the GNSS receiver and also predicted or precise orbits. The predicted or precise orbits are downloaded from the ephemeris download module. And here we have two options. Uh, we could can download, like in my case, the ephemeris from the University of Bern or from IGS. So these two modules provide the ephemeris to the RTK engine and um, yeah, they are used here in the processing. The processing engine behind the RTK engine is the same processing engine, like for example, used in TBC. Looking at the properties of the RTK engine, we see two processing modes, or we would see if we insert the module. The one processing mode is baseline, and this is what I'm using here. So I'm calculating baselines between the stations. It's also possible to use the um, RTK engine in VRS mode. Then the RTK engine connects to a real-time network, like for example, VRS now and get correction data from this network. In this case, you don't need a fixed reference station and you can use only monitoring stations, but normally the accuracy with baseline processing is much better, of course, depending on the baseline length. In T4D, we allow a maximum baseline length of 35 kilometers, but in most monitoring sites, the length between the stations is much shorter. We have here also the option to use redundant baselines. In this case, if I would select yes here, also the baseline between um, 313 and 400 would be calculated. Uh, the RTK engine has a lot of filter options. In this RTK engine, I'm not using any filter, 
but uh, in this RTK engine, I'm using, for example, a weighted mean filter of 10 minutes. Here we have uh, the option to select a sliding time window between 5 seconds and 4 hours. In this chart, we can see the difference between the unfiltered, which is the light red uh, chart, and the filtered results. You can see that the uh, filtered chart is much smoother than the unfiltered chart. Here in this view, you can see the results of a test uh, we did some time before. For the same baselines uh, for three kilometers from Hohenbrunn to Terrasat office, we moved up the antenna on the roof of our buildings for 10 centimeters. You can see that uh, the results here in the displacement chart showed this offset of 10 centimeters exactly after 10 minutes. Here in the RTK engine baseline view, you can see the same. The unfiltered results show the displacements uh, show the 10 centimeters right away where the filtered results needs 10 minutes to find uh, the new position. So uh, filtering is always good to have a smooth chart and not uh, too many variations or false alarms. But uh, the downside of filtering is always that it takes longer in case of a sudden movement to see uh, the, yeah, to see the displacement. The last module uh, for the real-time processing you need in T4D server is the integrity monitor module. This module performs a least square adjustment and calculates the deltas. The deltas are the result of the monitoring, basically the reference position minus the adjusted position. Here in this map to D view, we get an overview with uh, the current displacements. Uh, we also have a current displacements view here showing the current displacements uh, and also the sigma values. T4D server has a simple displacement chart where you can see the results of the monitoring stations. You can see here the delta northing easting height and the variations of the processing. But for analyzing the data, I would recommend to use T4D Web as it has more advanced data analysis functionalities. Now I'm connected to T4D Web and here we have two views of the data, the chart view and the analysis view. The chart view is similar to the displacement chart in T4D server and shows the results of one sensor. For example, here you can see the unfiltered results of the station Hohenbrunn. Next to the simple chart view, T4D Web offers a more advanced analysis view. Here you can create special charts with defined sensors. In this example, I created a normal chart with a rolling window of four days. Additionally, I define to show locks and plot bands. Here I defined the sensors I want to display and their component. I decided to show delta 2D and delta height for the station Saglerstraße and Hohenbrunn. Here I defined three plot bands with different colors, uh, red, yellow and green. Looking at the analysis, we see the defined plot bands with red, yellow and green and the displacements of the sensors. Let's look at the station Saglerstraße first. Here we can see the variations in 2D and height. The variations in 2D are very low. They are often in the range of 4 mm with some outliers at 6 mm. 
the height variations are much bigger. The peak you can see here is the result of the test I performed yesterday. I changed the antenna height of a station to test the alarm in T4D web. Here you can see a log entry changed server configuration. I added more resources to the server and this needed a restart. Changes like this can be noted in the log section of T4D web and displayed in the analysis. This was the result of the short 300 meter baseline and now we can look at the result of the 3 kilometer baseline to Hohenbrunn. Here in the height component we can see bigger variations around 3 to 4 centimeters. In GNSS processing the height accuracy is always worse than 2D. In the horizontal component, we can see variations around 1 cm. The variations can be reduced with the filter options we have in the RTK engine with the downside of longer reaction times after movements. Thank you for watching this video and check out the other videos in our channel, especially the one about the post-processing engine.